This week on CrossFeed. Super Bowl ads. More Super Bowl ads. Dating sites and dating sites. Evil Mother Teresa stamp. And Luther's Small Catechism, the comic book. Hello, everyone, and welcome to CrossFeed Religious News. I'm Pastor Dale Critchley, pastor of Shepherd of the Ridge Lutheran Church in North Ridgeville, Ohio. I'm Pastor Jim Butler from St. Luke's Lutheran Church in Dedham, Massachusetts, just outside Boston. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Mm-hmm. Hey, I'm really excited about something. You know, okay, we use Skype to um, to record this, and um, I'm I'm very excited. We've got something planned. Um, that I, I guess it's been done before, but uh, not around here. Uh, and that is uh, a number of our listeners and viewers know Pastor Joe Burnham, um, also known as Fake Jim, and uh, who has c- uh, co-hosted the show with us before. And he is in Africa right now, and in South Africa specifically, but he's been in different parts of Africa since... Uh, end of or since new year's and we are going to uh on march 7th he is going to visit our congregation via um actually we're going to use iChat but um you know similar kind of video conferencing technology uh while he's still in africa and he's going to do a presentation on uh, global uh, missions and um, and and you know and talk about that and and so we're really excited about it. Um, yeah, I had one guy I was from the congregation. I was t- telling him about it, and and uh, he he goes, "Oh, well, I got to make sure that I I'm going to take a vacation day for that day so that I can be there and and just you know people are pretty excited." So. Um, you know, it's 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 just it's not the kind of thing that you used to, that used to be possible, you know, and mm-hmm. that's true. So, um, you know, it's just it's it's pretty cool, and and um, and plus, we didn't up until a few days ago, uh, we didn't have internet in our sanctuary either. Um, thanks to uh, one of our members, just said, you know what, that's really important, and um, he uh, just made a donation to be able to pay for the equipment that we needed to do that too so we had to boost our our wireless signal on that and um it's just everything's just kind of falling into place to make this stuff possible so we're real excited about it very good um normally we put off letters and comments to the end but since i I didn't write this down anywhere i want to make sure i mentioned it now so any by the way anytime you have comments it's always good cross uh, podcast at crossfeednews.com well, um, last week we did our story on the uh, high-powered sites that uh, had the little coded Bible verses on them, uh-huh. as you might remember. Well, our special military consultant called me after he listened to our podcast, and my son made it quite clear that any time we talk about the military, we really should ask him first <laughs> to make sure we know what we're talking about. Um, so... Um, you and I say it said, who pays attention to the serial numbers? Don't let you be about war. Remember we actually said that? Yeah. Uh, that shows that we had known nothing about the military. The military is all about serial numbers. <laughs> um, come find out, according to my son, those uh, sites cost way more than the rifles themselves do. Oh, really? Yes. Uh, which, by the way, are not high-powered rifles. They're not. You know, they're, he's just barely over 22 caliber strength. There, they're not that oh. powerful rifle. Oh. Yeah, yeah, but the sights are way cost. Yeah, they're they're much more worth a lot more than the the rifle itself is. And so, yes, you do inventory. And how do they do inventory? By serial, serial number. number. <laughs> and they sit there and they read the serial numbers off to make sure. Okay. However, that the stuff that's the Bible verse stuff, they don't include that. They stop before that. Oh, do they? <laughs> yeah, they stop right oh, there. Matter of fact, my son said the first time he sat there and was, was working on these to inventory them, his first reaction was, those numbers don't fit the pattern. 
And uh, he just he had no idea what it meant, but it didn't fit the pattern of the serial numbers. It just, you know, so yeah, they don't uh, they don't record those anywhere. <laughs> so um, okay, well, all right, well, thanks, Josh. That that's good to know. Yeah, see, what do you, you know? Who'd have thought that a religious news show would need to have a military correspondent? <laughs> <laughs> consultant. Consultant. Or, yeah, or, but he's our yeah. SMC, Special Military Consultant. There you go. You know, SPEMC, you know, we'll give him some acronym. We had some guy who was uh, up here, and he's a lieutenant in, no, he's higher than that. I can't remember what, what his rank was. He's some off, I think he's a uh, captain in the Air Force, and he went to become a pastor and uh, you know, we require we require an interview before you go to the seminary. And one of the things he told me, he says, he, he, I asked one of the strengths was, he says, communication. One thing the Air Force has taught me is how to commute clearly and concisely. To which I he responded, you're going to teach your congregation to speak an acronym? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know. Yeah, pretty much. Go to these service, we're going to do the the care, and then the, the then the glory, and then uh, after that we do the uh, uh, script rep. You know. <laughs> oh, but you know, at the same time, you think about it. If you want to be a Lutheran pastor, we're all about the acronyms. You know, you got the LWML, the LLL, the your <laughs> LCEF and LCMS and <laughs> ELCA, and <laughs> and of course the best one is the Blue Ribbon Task Force on. The structure and security of the structure and something governance. of the Senate. BT of governance. Yeah, the BTRSSG or something like that. I'm going to sound long to say the letters that does say the commission. Anyway, let's move on here. Um, Super Bowl this weekend. Dale, who you fight? Who, who you rooting for? Well, I tell you, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not a, like a big fan of either of the teams, but I have to root for the Saints because they beat the Vikings. Therefore, they beat Brett Favre. And Brett Favre is a traitor to the Packers, and so therefore I've got to root for the Saints. He never would have. He's not a traitor to the Packers. They just offered him money. The Packers said, "Go away." So he <laughs> went away and took money. So it's all the game. But I, because the Saints uh, um, have never been in the Super Bowl, let alone won it in 44 years, um, because they uh, put up with Mike Ditka as a head coach for a while. Uh, and uh, just because I think of New Orleans and everything they've, they've suffered, yeah, I've been pulling for the Saints, too. I, it'd be fun to see that. Indianapolis has had it. Peyton Manning's got his ring. Spread the wealth. We'll find out. But, of course, nobody really watches the game anymore. It's all about the ads. And uh, let's start off with the one that everybody's talking about, the uh, Tim Tebow ad. Uh, now, Tim Tebow is uh, the uh, Heisman-winning quarterback for the University of Florida, Gators. And um, his mother, um, when he was, uh, she was pregnant, uh, became down with a, a very, uh, an illness, uh, a virus. I mean, and some people, yeah, and some people said, you know, you might need to abort your child because of this. And she refused. And of course, wound up giving birth then to uh, this great quarterback. And so their story is going to be the subject of a Super Bowl ad, which is going to be, um, which is being funded by Focus on the Family and, um, some, <laughs> uh, feminist groups are not real happy about this. Right. Um, so now it's important to note that the, um, the ad, CBS reviewed the script for it, um, I haven't been able, you know, I, I thought that I'd be able to find it somewhere. You know, usually this stuff gets leaked and I looked for it just to see, all right, Ooh. you know, we're, we're going to be reporting on this. And, you know, I've seen some of the other ones already, a couple of them anyway. And, and I mean, this nowhere, it's not out there. And so you can have to wait to see it, but people are upset about it without actually having seen it. And, um, now interestingly, all right, she was in, when, when this happened, she was in the Philippines. Um, on a missionary trip. And um, I did see one argument that said, and of all places, this was in the Huffington Post, um, that said that um, that her story may be false because uh, 
abortion has been in all forms has been illegal in uh, in the Philippines for like 60 years. But then uh, there was they had a print a retraction at the bottom of the story because somebody sent them a um, New York Times article from 2005 that said that 70 percent of um, I forget how exactly it was worded, but basically, it this New York Times article showed that um, that there's a lot of abortions going on, of you know, elective abortions going on um, in uh, in the Philippines, and you know, by doctors, and they're not getting imprisoned or anything for it, and so uh, you know, so they they said, yeah, that that kind of you know hurts her credibility quite a bit. So, you know, so she's trying to say, oh, the whole story, it's not even true. And, uh, yeah, yeah, actually it is. Um, so they're not, you know, really it's all about, I, I think what we're probably going to see, and this is just speculation, having not read the script, is the sort of, you know, the, the, the message that I'm getting from this is that um, here she found herself in a very difficult situation. Um, where a lot of women would have said, you know what, um, you know, better abort the baby and, and doctor even recommended. And she said, no, I'm going to take care of my son. And, and the message is, isn't it great that she chose not that she did not choose abortion, right? Without actually saying abortion, without actually saying pro-life, you know, they'll say she chose life or something like that. All right. Um, so, you know, people are upset about this. And it seems like they're particularly upset uh, because it is focused on the family sponsoring it. And and so I see a lot of, um, in the articles about it that I've read, you know, they they point to some of the more ridiculous things that Focus on the Family has done over the years. And they have done some pretty, you know, weird things um, through the years, Uh, you know, very, some of it very political and and just sort of odd. But... um, but that has nothing to do with this particular um with this particular ad maybe the human race deserves to be wiped out i mean arguably, what are the best- yeah you can't i mean you can't separate the the company from the ad but i'm like, go ahead well you can to a certain extent and one of the people who i i sally jenkins in an article in uh the in a, a pundit column in the washington post on tuesday um or when, Monday, Monday, really just, I think, hit the nail on the head. Now, the funny thing is, is that she's pro-life. I mean, she's pro-choice, okay? He, he, she, yeah, she's pro-choice. She says, I'm pro-choice, he's not. Uh, and uh, some of the things that she points up, <laughs> because as, as statements in Super Bowls go, I prefer the idea of Tebow's pro-life ad say to, say, Jim McMahon dropping his pants as the former quarter Chicago Bears quarterback once did in response to a question. Uh, we're always harping on athletes to be more responsible and engaged in the issues of their day. It seems more than a little hypocritical to insist that it, uh, that only if it means criticizing sneaker companies. Uh, let's see, what's, what's another one he says here? Um, Are you incapable uh, of restraining yourself, or do you take pride in being an insufferable uh, know it Apparently now feel... Uh, 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 um, the, the, they talked about the choice that Pam Tebow made to have her son. Only the National, National Organization of Women says they shouldn't be allowed to. Apparently, the National Organization of Women feels its commercials its inappropriate message for America to see for 30 seconds. But women in bikinis selling beer is the right one. I would like to meet the genius of now who made that decision. <laughs> On second thought, no, I wouldn't. <laughs> well, yeah, that's the whole thing. Why is the National uh, Organization of Women not protesting the GoDaddy ads? Right. Um, it's interesting. She said that, that they had this uh, guy uh, that Tebow was one time being interviewed. And Tebow was being interviewed. And somebody was asked uh, last summer. And someone was asked, are you saving yourself for marriage? Yes, I am, he replied. The room fell into a hush. The best college football player in the country had just announced he was a virgin. As Tebow gauged the reaction for the reporters in the room, he started laughing. They were more embarrassed than he was. I think you all are stunned right now, he said. You can't even ask a question. 
That's how far we've come from any sane, any kind of sane viewpoint about star athletes and sex. Promiscuity is so the norm that if the stud isn't shagging everything in sight, we feel faintly ashamed for him. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then she makes this point. Uh, the president of now said, let's pull the ad, focus on the game. Trouble is, you can't focus on the game without focusing on the individuals who play it. And that's the genius of Tebow's ad. Tebow himself is an inescapable fact. Abortion doesn't just involve serious issues of life, but potential lives. Heisman Trophy winners, scientists, doctors, artists, inventors, little leaguers, who never would come to be if their birth mothers had not wrestled with the stakes and chosen to carry those lives to term. And those stories are every bit as real and valid as the stories preferred by now. And then she goes on and says, let me be clear, I couldn't agree with Tebow, Tebow more. It's my belief the state has no business putting its hand up under skirts. I don't care that we differ. Some people will care that the ads paid by focus on the family. Some will care that Tebow is a creationist. Some will care about other things. None of this is the point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. Got a uh, like I said, I thought she, I thought it was an excellent, uh, excellently written uh, uh, comment. Yeah, and and I'll and I'll give you a contrasting one. This is from Greg to Greg Doyle from CBSSports.com. He says, "If you're a sports fan, and I am, that's the holiest day of the year. It's not a day to discuss abortion, for it or against it. I don't care what you are. On Super Bowl Sunday, I don't care what I am. February seventh is simply not the day to have that discussion." Isn't it good that he's got his priorities in place? That the outcome of well, a football game is more important than, you know, human lives? Or, you know, for that matter, on the other side of the coin, you know, uh, reprodu reproductive choice or, you know, whatever term you want to use. That, oh, no, this football game is more important than that. Well, let's, 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 and I was thinking about, let's put the shoe on the other foot. What if it was, see, first off, I think this is the wonderful postmodern type of ad because it's it's not saying abortion is right abortion is wrong it's simply saying here's our story mm -hmm. of a lovely lady and <laughs> everything else here <laughs> but uh, um but what if we had a you know what if we had another ad that was 30 second ad and said you know a, a woman i was lost I, I was 18 i was unmarried um i became pregnant um I just saw how this could just, you know, just make all these changes in my life. I wasn't really willing to. I, you know, I chose to have an abortion. I think I, and I'm thankful that I live in a country that allows me to have that choice. Right. You know, would we be, would we sit back and go, that's not really appropriate for the, for the Super Bowl? No, it's, Although, it's, again, it's the thing is, is, if they never mention abortion, it's a soft sell thing, then, you know, it's, it's, you know, well, you can no, say, well, <clears throat> I thought about that one too. All right. Because I, I was thinking the same thing. Okay, what if the shoe was on the other foot? I always like to try to, you know, get a get a sense of of what if it was the other way around. All right. And so here's here's the one that I came up with, and I, I think this would actually be a good one for them to do. Maybe we'll see it next year, but I doubt that any of them are watching our show. All right. But if you are, and you steal the idea. Money. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Come on. Remember, remember, <laughs> the, the, you know, there is a thing called, you know, stealing an idea. So go ahead. You know, just just yeah. remember, you heard it here first. D you know, D-A-L-E-C-R-I-T-C-H-L-E-Y on the check. Yeah, can, can't you just Four, imagine the five, headline? Uh, 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 five digits at least. <laughs> yeah, you're just picturing the headline. <laughs> Preferably all nines. Pro-life pastor accepts check from, from <laughs> pro-choice organization for idea for Super Bowl ad. <laughs> All right. All right. But here it is, okay? Just make sure you tie it to your church and to mine, too. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. Um, you, have, you have a woman who's like a, a, a scientist who developed the cure for, you know, something. Okay. Some major disease. Okay. And she says... I had to make a choice because I was unexpectedly pregnant. I knew that if I made this, that if I carried this baby to term, that this would disrupt my education, my research, you know, whatever it is that would prevent me from saving the lives of all of these people that have been saved because of, um, because of my work. And so therefore I made the choice to terminate the pregnancy 
in order to continue working on this cure. And because I made that choice, all of these people today are alive. There's your ad right there. Now all you got to do is find a, um, a, a, a woman who has, um, you know, who's working on some sort of, or, or has worked on some sort of groundbreaking thing that's helped a lot of people and that had an abortion around the same time while she was, you know, that, that, that affected her somehow. And th- and there's your ad. Now you're probably going to, that's, that's a one in a million shot trying to find somebody like that. Um, the other thing is, then you, it, it's still a, a, you know, a controversial thing. I mean, um, because then there's, there's that whole, do the ends justify the means, you know, kind of thing or, or well, she could have, um, she could have handed off her notes to somebody else to finish it up and, you know, share the credit or, or, or just put it on hold or, or whatever, you know, there's, or, or just worked through her pregnancy, uh, which many, many, many women do. And then, um, you, you know, give the child up for adoption or whatever, you know, so that, I mean, that would still be a controversial thing, but. I think that it would be an effective ad and I don't see how anybody would be, um, I mean, there would definitely, it would, it would be controversial. It it would drum up all kinds of discussion, but I I don't think that CBS would, um, would block it. Uh, Yeah. I don't think, by the way, I think focus on the family really should write to the national organization women and send them a thank you note. Because they've got probably more publicity for this than they ever would have any other way. So, um, yeah, they, they, they spent two and a half million dollars uh, uh, plus whatever the the actual production cost of the ad, which is probably pretty minimal in comparison. All right, but man, have they gotten their money's worth out of it, and it hasn't even shown yet. <laughs> that's right. That's the that's the, that, that's the funny thing, and that's one thing Sally Jenkins points out. She says. You know, she says actually, yeah. She says, uh, yeah. He, she, uh, focus on the family. This thing is obviously a lot smarter. Uh, yeah, because one thing they haven't they haven't allowed it to be shown, seen, and so it's hard when you're criticizing something that's not out there. Speaking of ads that didn't make the cut. Yeah. Now, see. Okay. This next one did not make the cut. All right, and, and that's an important note here. All right. Um, and this uh, one actually is out there. This one I've watched. Yeah, actually, yeah. The, yeah, you've watched. Hmm, okay. Yeah. I don't, we don't even uh, go with that. Ah, <laughs> uh, but, uh, uh. Disgusting! Uh, uh. But anyway, the, uh, uh, uh. Uh, Yeah, it's for a company called, uh, uh, Man Crunch, which is a gay dating site. Now, how in the world they could ever possibly think that this one was going to make the cut? I don't know. You know, that's the thing. It's not about who, what the company is. And that's what they're, oh, this is discrimination. All right. Here's, here's the, you know, picture this if you, <laughs> maybe you don't want to picture it. But, you know, this is, this is the ad. Okay. Um, you have these two guys in, um, in football jerseys watching the Super Bowl. And they're, and they're on opposing what sides. What I wish is that. I- yeah, I, yeah, yeah. One, one's in a Packers jersey and the other's in a Minnesota Vikings jersey. Or actually, the colors. It probably doesn't. Is that, there's no insignia on there to show the team, but you you, right. you know what they are. Mm-hmm. And and so they're you know sort of cheering against each other in that, and they've got a bowl of chips in between them. And so they both reach into the the bowl of chips at the same time, and their hands brush against each other, and then you hear the. Uh, you know, romantic music and that. And then they look at each other and look into each other's eyes. And then, um, one sort of climbs on the lap of the other one and they start making out. And then the camera kind of moves over and there's a third guy in the room that just kind of looks over at the other two and goes, okay, (laughs) you know, and then, and, and that's it. And it's to advertise this gay dating site. All right. So the problem here is not that they're gay. I mean, as far as CBS's standards would go, the problem is they're making out. I mean, it's like, I'm sorry, but if this were, a, um, you know, an eHarmony ad <laughs> um, and it was 
and they were advertising it with a heterosexual couple, I'd still say it's inappropriate as a Super Bowl ad. I mean, you know, my kids like to watch the Super Bowl ads. They're not so much on the on the sports end of it, but they like the ads, right? I don't want them watching that. I don't care who it is. And they don't want to see it, for that matter. Right. And, you know, uh, um, and by the way, they can't sit there and say, oh, this is just discrimination. Uh, GoDaddy had one of their ads rejected, too. GoDaddy <laughs> has an ad rejected every year. At least one. That's true. I mean, you know, you got to have... But they do that system. on purpose. I mean, they do that on purpose to say, well... <clears throat> and, and here's what they do. This is... And by the way, I have to say this is brilliant marketing. Even though I disagree with it, it's brilliant marketing on GoDaddy's um, part. They always do one that gets rejected. All right? And then they do their regular one that makes it. And they say, go to our site to see the rejected one. And so all the guys whose wives won't let them watch porn <laughs> <laughs> will go and say, well, I'm just watching the ad. <laughs> oh. Like yours? <laughs> yeah, you know, she, uh, I, I've never really asked her whether I could, but I'm not really interested in it, so. <laughs> but I, no, I don't think she'd want me to either. Speaking of gays and e-harmony. It's like my little, my, my subtle uh, segue there. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, um, yeah, we've had a, a, eHarmony, now you have to understand, it was started by uh, uh, a clinical psychologist by the name of uh, Neil Clark Warren, who happens to be an evangelical Christian. Uh, and uh, Warren is, uh, 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 he never labeled it a Christian site, although it was, Highly advertised through focus on the family and things like that. Okay. Um, eHarmony was uh, started by Neil Clark Warren, who's a clinical psychologist, and he's an evangelical Christian. Now, it has never been a, quote, Christian, unquote, dating site. It's all, Although it was, adver- it was advertised on fam- focus on the family, uh, I knew one person who got involved with it because she heard about it through her church on a Christian tele- radio station. So there, there was strongly targeted to Christians, although it's not technically a Christian site. No, and it has links for Christian, black, Jewish, Hispanic, senior, and local dating. So, you know, it even has Jewish uh, dating, which I find it interesting that it has Jewish but not Muslim, when there's a lot more Muslims than there are Jews. But anyway. All right. Anyway, so they, uh, but it was always just for straights. Uh, And... Uh, uh, in New Jersey and in California, gays and lesbians didn't like that, and both of them sued eHarmony to um, um, go uh, to to require uh, 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 gays and lesbians to be served on the site. Uh, they said originally they, uh, you know, uh, so, it, that the models were only based on married heterosexual couples, and then they also pointed out that. Um, there are, you know, some some uh, sites out there that that cater exclusively to gays. Why can't they cater exclusively to, to straights? Yes, mancrunch.com comes yeah, to mind. Yeah. That's true. Now, the problem is um, that was probably all a very good argument to make, and had it actually gone to trial, um, might have, you know, might have won the day. That's one of the problem is that it says putting an end to two and a half years of litigation. Uh, the reality is they reached an agreement. This was an out of court settlement in both cases. Yeah, because, you know, well, we can keep this out of the courts and just keep, uh, you know, keep dragging this out. And uh, and you, your lawyer fees rack up and rack up and rack up to the point where you go, you know, this would be cheaper to just say, Fine, whatever. I'll pay the thing. Let's get this over with. All right. That happens in. I I know something that happened to in a criminal court case, where basically they were. She was told by the or her lawyer was told by the DA. That's fine. We can drag this out, and you know it had already gone on for over a year, and and I mean it was it was ridiculous. And she's. I mean she lost all of the. I mean she lost 
just ridiculous amounts of money and in lawyer fees and stuff like that. And she finally said, just get this over with whatever. I'll, I'll do whatever I have to, to, if I have to go to, you know, prison for a little while or whatever, just, I, I'm out of money. <laughs> I do a situation with a pastor and, uh, it was, uh, he was sued by a cult group. Um, and he wasn't even really involved, but it cost him $10,000 just to have the judge say, you know, you're dismissed from the lawsuit. Mm-hmm. So anyway, yeah, that was kind of the thing. So it'd been interesting to see if it actually gone to court. And so anyhow, they, what they wound up doing, eHarmony wound up starting a new site called Compatible Partners, um, which was, uh, uh, they did in response to the New, New, New Jersey lawsuit last year, which actually was under their attorney general. Um, and, um, now in order to make these other people happy in California, they, um, have to, uh, have the eHarmony logo in a prominent position. Uh, it has to say that the service is brought to you by eHarmony. Not just powered by eHarmony. Yeah, it's powered by. And the third thing is, oh, uh, if you're bisexual, you can use both, both sides for one, one fee. And uh, and they have to pay four thousand dollars to every California resident who wrote a written complaint. Yeah, it's the half million dollars. Yeah, so yeah, that's part of that's, but that's where it's it's going to, you know, after lawyer fees, um, <clears throat> which is <laughs> that's a good investment on a stamp, huh? <laughs> ah, a chain letter. Ah, I touched it. I touched it. Ah! Uh, I, I mean, this whole thing just really, you know, really upsets me because it it's gonna, you know, what what does this say? This says that you are not entitled to practice your beliefs. That you know, they basically had to compromise their beliefs. You know, this guy's an evangelical Christian. He's not gonna want to run a um a gay dating site, and. Um, because it's it's promoting a a practice that he considers to be immoral, and so you know, I, I don't know. I it gets to the point where you just want to go. You know what? I'm washing my hands of the whole thing. I mean, it's not that he wants to. It's not that he should shut it down or whatever. But I think I'd be looking at that point, looking for a um. You know, start. What's what's the next website I'm going to start up that you know that can't get attacked by these people? We, however, don't discriminate against anybody. We 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 are equal opportunities offenders. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, you know, well, last uh, last episode um, we we uh, sided with the with the Roe v. Wade crowd. This time I, I gave the um, I, I just handed the uh, pro-choice lobby a, um, a, a brilliant, if I do say so myself, um, <laughs> idea for a Super Bowl ad. <laughs> hey, God, my brilliant! So who knows? <laughs> right, as long as I get well, my speak- check, I'll be happy. <laughs> Speaking of uh, uh, of discrimination, let's go to talk about your good old buddies at the Freedom from Religion Foundation up there in Madison. You gotta love them. And speaking of investments on stamps, yeah, it's really uh, Mother Teresa is going to be recognized this year on a stamp by the U.S. Postal Service. It will be her 100th birthday, and the Freedom of from Religion Foundation is saying is. Number one, uh, its supporters should boycott the stamp. And number two, they want a letter-writing campaign to spread the word about the dark side of Mother Teresa. Don't you I didn't know that? she believed in the force. <laughs> no, but, all right, all right. No, just stop and think about this. Well, I mean, the whole thing is that, that she's a religious figure, and they don't think it's okay for religious figures to be featured on stamps. Okay, and we'll get into that more of that for in a minute. But now, just stop and think about this. All right. They're protesting the post office. And how are they doing it? A letter writing campaign. So we want to, we want to, t- 
tell the post office how mad we are at them. And how are we going to do it? By buying stamps. This would be like PETA protesting, you know, um, people eating meat by opening up a an all-you-can-eat barbecue. <laughs> you know, like, go buy lots of stamps to show them how mad you are. <laughs> Guys, I don't think you really get the idea of a boycott. <laughs> this just cracked me up. I'm sorry. <laughs> but they're saying, they're saying that you should use other stamps instead. Um, like... Uh, there's a, a new stamp honoring Catherine Hepburn, who was an atheist, um, or any of the, the other 2010 stamps, uh, including cartoonist Bill Maudlin, singer Kate Smith, filmmaker Oscar Miko, um, painter Winslow Homer, or poet Julia de Bourgeois. So, um, <clears throat> so make sure you use those stamps in your letter writing campaign. <laughs> The post, o- the post office says um, it's not her religion that we're celebrating. It's the fact that he that she dedicated her life to the poor, which is also the reason that she got the 1979 Nobel Peace Prize. And I will not be the one to break the peace we've made here today. Yeah, but just to give you an idea of how, um, I don't know, negative these people are... Um, you know, uh, 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 Ann Gaylor, who's the head of it, says um, uh, she infused Catholicism to her secular honors, including an anti-abortion rant, quote, during her uh, Nobel Prize acceptance speech. Uh, and, uh, and at the end of her life, she was very wealthy. So the Mother Teresa was extremely wealthy. I didn't know she was all, you know, people gave to her charity and things, but she, you know. She she kept her thing of being, you know, to the poor. Yeah, yeah. Her uh, foundation or whatever it was had a lot of money, and you could debate about how that money was spent. But she wasn't living in luxury. No, she stayed with the poor her whole life. Um, I mean, it, who? I mean, of course, these people also complain about the Virgin Mary stamp for Christmas every year. Well, you know what? It's they are Christmas cards. People send them out. You know, it's it's, and these are works of art that they have that they use. Um, you know, and they have Santa Claus stamps, and they have um, you know. But I think that you know. By the way, do you remember the day? Do you remember the, the Martin Luther stamp? Uh, Surprised that one's not listed in here. Yeah, nineteen eighty three. There was. Um, uh, 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 what the famous artist who lived in Luther's day, Lucas Cronach, his, oh um, his, uh, one of his pictures, paintings of Luther was on a stamp in, uh, 14, in 1983 to celebrate the 500th year of Luther's birth. Now, there's a but, guy uh, who is principally known for first, his religion. I mean, yeah. he reformed uh, the church. That's <laughs> what he's known for. Um, yeah, that one was uh, actually was a uh, LCMS guy, Bill Dannemeyer from California, who sponsored the resolution to, to have the stamp made. Uh, this is so negative, actually, that uh, um, <clears throat> another atheist thinks they're off the rocker here. Uh, Bruce Scheiman, author of An Atheist Defends Religion, he says this is st- this is stepping over the line. Um, Clearly, there are a number of things you can point to and say it's religious and a number of things you can point to and say it's a-religious. So it really doesn't make sense to protest it. Um, Yeah. I mean, you know, here's the thing. All right. The Freedom From Religion Foundation would like some um, public support, right? Okay. If, if, you know, if you're going to go around attacking different things, attack Ten Commandments monuments in uh, courthouses or, you know, I'll even side with you on that one. All right. But uh, or, uh, you know, sort of prayer in schools or, or you know, and, and that kind of thing. OK, don't attack Mother Teresa. <laughs> I mean, you're just not going to get popular support on something like that, because the thing is, she's seen as sort of the epitome of of morality and, and compassion and, and goodness. 
in in the 20th century. You know, I mean, she's respected more than, and she's respected universally. It'd be like uh, like the Dalai Lama. You know, has he ever been on a stamp? No, well, no, no, not that I know of. But yeah, you, you, you try to speak. Uh, of course, but why is she so popular? Because of the Roman Catholic PR machine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they want to make her a saint, and this is part of their PR machine. Because you know, the the whole how uh, how it's determined who becomes a Roman Catholic saint and who doesn't. It really comes down to whether they've ever appeared on a stamp before. <laughs> right. Because and, and they're absolutely right. Because, you know, back Lucy and Peanut Strip once told um, uh, Schroeder that, that Beethoven wasn't that good because he'd never had been on a baseball card. How could you be great if you're never on a baseball card? There you go. So, so it's the same argument right yep. here. <laughs> How can you be a Catholic saint if you've never been on a U.S. postal stamp? You know... That's funny because Lucy Van Pelt sort of reminds me of Annie Gaylor. <laughs> I wouldn't kick a football from her either. <laughs> so, you know, I just, of course, the fact that the, the Roman Catholic Church has somehow or other managed to have saints for 2,000 years, you know, for, for 700 years for the American, America even exists. I love that postage stamps with people's pictures on them. Uh, <laughs> Now, one other point that the Postal Service makes is they've had lots of people with religious backgrounds. And he mentions Malcolm X, who was the chief spokesman for the Nation of Islam, right? And Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., right? Well, and Father Flanagan. And Father Flanagan. And, well, they, they're against Father Flanagan, too. But they say, well, King and Malcolm X, they're okay because um, they are... They're not principally known. Yeah, I, I love this. Martin Luther King just happened to be a minister. <laughs> no, it was his faith that drove him to seeing all people as equals. <laughs> While that doesn't get emphasized by the media, that was, you know, that was what drove him. It wasn't just what that he was trying to strive for, you know, for himself or, or, or his family or something like that. You know, what 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 he saw, what his worldview was, was because of his well, you can't separate worldview and religious beliefs. Right. And and right, you're absolutely right. His his worldview was informed by his religion and a lot of the power in the black community has always been in the churches. Right. The Reverend Jesse Jackson, uh, you know, how many of the Southern, uh, uh, you know, uh, the Southern, Prote uh, the Southern leadership, Prote isn't it the Southern Protestant Leadership Conference or just the Southern Leadership Conference? Uh, how many of those, though, are, are pastors? Uh, Al Sharpton. Uh, even, even Al Sharpton's, pa yeah, Reverend. I mean, so Black Pentecostal, but a lot of them, I mean, so I don't know. As far as I'm concerned, just just go back to Madison and just stay there, people. You know, I... yeah, they like you there. <laughs> <laughs> well, some people do. I've got family there. They don't like her. They just sort of roll their eyes and throw their hands up in disgust, though. Okay, I'll I, I'll let you do this last one. I, I you know I don't know much. Oh, okay. This is. I mean, the, the article is actually a, a Facebook ad, okay? But this really struck me, at, and, and we don't usually, you know, product releases and stuff like that, but we do do comic books, you know? Um, and this is a comic book version that Concordia Publishing House is, is releasing of Luther's Small Catechism. And I know a lot of our viewers um, and listeners are Lutheran. And um, so, you know, I, I saw this and I went, huh. Now, they're calling it a graphic novel, but it's... Uh, it's only um, great. I don't have the article in front of me now, um, but it's 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 only it's it's pretty short. I mean, like they squeeze two commandments on one page, you know, so it's it doesn't take much. Um, the uh, I don't know. I looked at the pictures. I looked at it. It, it didn't impress me. I I think. 
I don't know. OCPHC's been going a little weird on the, the whole catechism thing. I mean, they have my first catechism. Now they have the. You know what they should have done? They should have got the mecha, guys. The me- mecha manga. Me- <laughs> mecha <laughs> manga catechism. Now that would have been cool. You know, yeah. little, little robots, or, you know. Yeah, the, these, the characters. I mean, and, you know, they did a nice job. It's, it's quality artwork and everything. But the characters, well, for one, they don't have pupils. They kind of look like. Little Orphan Annie um, comics. And it's just, what this reminds me of is um, when I was a teenager, I saw a lot of this in this, in the, um, in the eighties, this, uh, where you have these like baby boomers who are trying to act cool and hip. And, um, you know, it's, and it's sort of like if I try to use um, a little too much, uh, slang that um and and my daughters just kind of look at me like uh dad <laughs> and that's kind of how this comes across is I, I think that and 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 so here's the thing the next question is who is this targeted at what what age level is this targeted at okay if you're targeting younger kids then okay you know but at the same time You've got under the sixth commandment. You've got a um, a kid um, holding a hiding under his blankets with a flashlight and a porno magazine. And okay, yeah, how are you gonna explain that one? To <laughs> What's this picture? What's going on here? You know? So, and and, I mean, and the whole, all it is is go ahead. Oh, it's just, it's kind of shallow. It, um, you know, it just, it's got the text. It's not like it's a story or anything. It's really, it's, it's more of just an illustrated, um, using sort of comic style panels and comic style illustrations of sort of, you know, showing pictures of what they're talking about. It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! And, uh, Goofy kid that looks like he's out of uh, a, the seems to be sort of the main character that keeps saying, "What does this mean?" and stuff. Um, that I think it's supposed to be like a young Martin Luther, but because um, his hat looks kind of like Luther's doctor's cap, um, but he he kind of looks like he belongs in a Oliver Twist. Or something like that. They all adore him. They think he's a righteous dude. So, I I saw it. The you know I saw the 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 headline on Facebook and and I went cool. You know, and because I do like the my first catechism idea. Um, I actually had that idea and, and sent a note to CPH and said, hey, you guys should really do an archbook version of the catechism. And they said, oh, it's it's we're actually working on it. And I went, oh good you know and and i like that idea but this it's it, it seems like with the comic book thing that they're trying to um to go for that sort of seventh and eighth grade level of, of kids that are studying the catechism and when i first saw it i went oh gee if this is good you know maybe i'll just have the kids get this for confirmation class instead you know um because they might actually read it when they're supposed to but then I looked at it and I thought, oh, they're going to look at this and say, lame. So, I I mean, you know, I, I think it's a good effort on CPH's part. Um, I think that I think that it would be helpful if they fleshed it out more, if they actually made it into a graphic novel, put some sort of background story, um, and, you know, and... and where they sort of show this in action instead of just like, you know, first commandment, you know, we should fear, love and trust in God above all things. And, um, and then it shows a rock star, a computer money, a football and a baseball. And I'm looking at the picture. What does this mean? (laughs) Like, Oh, those are idols. Okay. Got it. But the thing is, even that, you know, that really doesn't capture the essence of what that commandment is all about of, of having God at the center of your life and, you know, not just, and, and so it just, it seemed like they were, it, it, I suppose this is something that you could, 
you know, hand the kids a month before um, confirmation class, and they'd probably, you know, if you said, here, read this beforehand, there's a better chance they're going to read this than if you just hand them, you know, a, a blue or maroon colored catechism or whatever, um, and, and expect them to read that. Or green, um, shout out to our ELCA viewers and listeners. So, although I'm not sure what no, color I they are now. I just think but. this looks... I don't know. I'm Greetings, Professor Dalton. Did I ever tell you that I figured it out and I have somewhere between ten and 12,000 comic books? Really? Yeah. Going wow. back to 1980. Okay, so I've got, you know, I, I've been collecting these suckers for 30 years here. Um, <clears throat> and I'd go back that far. Yeah. Okay. I'm younger than you. Man, you started late. Yeah, well, well, actually, I had a bunch in high school, and I, I got rid of all of them, and then I started again while I was in seminary. Okay. So I, I'm definitely a bit of a connoisseur of the comic book and the graphic novel format. Uh, matter of fact, for Christmas, my, you know, most of what I wanted were graphic novels, and uh, uh, so I got a whole bunch of them. And so I'm a bit of a connoisseur of this whole thing. It needs to have a story. It needs to have a direction. This is going to be maybe interesting to pre- to people who think comics are things that kids like, yeah. without realizing that graphic novels are you know headed towards people who are at least in their twenties. And 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 that's the thing; they always have been. I mean, you know, if you look at at, at comic books, I mean, you know, I've got I only have I have less than a thousand. And part of that is because I sold a bunch of them to help pay for my honeymoon. And um, so I've, I've still got quite a few um, and uh, probably will unload those eventually too. Um, except for I have one box of, of do not sell ones. But um, it, so yeah, I mean, you know, obviously we care more about them than, you know, maybe the average person, but yeah, I, I don't know. I'm just I'm looking at this going. You know, if you're going to do a comic book, get people who know comic books, you know, to do it. And it, it just, I, you know, I think part of it is so often in, um, when it comes to the sort of Christian media, you you do sort of a Christian version of something. And, you know, it's like, okay, there's YouTube and then there's GodTube, which now they change it to something else. I can't remember what. Um, so that it doesn't sound quite so derivative. But, like, there's a Christian Facebook and there's, you know, there's even a Christian. No, wait, there's not a Christian eBay. There's a Christian Craigslist. Um, and, you know, and also it's like, um, you know, so this is a Christian comic book and it's not, it's by no means the first one, but the thing is there have been Christian comic books that were pretty good. Uh, actually, sir, I think we prefer to go with the bizarre and risky. Um, I, I have one. It's called, uh, the Thomas Nelson publishing did, um, that was called the illuminator and it, you know, it wasn't bad. It, it was, you know, it wasn't uh Spider-Man and the Gwen Stacy story or anything, but you know, it was, it was all right. It was it was an enjoyable read, all right. Mm-hmm. Whereas this, this is a teaching tool that um, where you can hold it up and go, you know, you shall not murder. And here's a picture, and we can talk about the picture. This this might be good. All right. Here's here's a good use for this. Pick this up for your family. Put it on the dinner table. And then, um, when you're, when you're done eating dinner, while the kids are still finishing up, cause I don't know, but I suppose as they get older, maybe this turns around, but, um, I'm always the first one done eating any meal. Um, and my wife says it's cause I eat too fast, but, and she's probably right. <laughs> but, um, but then, you know, after that, I'm sitting there waiting for the rest of the family to eat. Okay. So at that point, I could pull this out and say, all right, next one. All right, everybody look at the picture. Listen, you know, here's the this particular section of the catechism. All right, let's talk about it. 
you know, what, what does this mean? And, and not just reciting back, but, um, you know, how does this apply to your life and, and stuff like that. And, and just as a sort of conversation starter kind of thing, but then I could do that with just a regular catechism too. And the picture is not going to add a whole lot. So, but I, you know, for, if you have younger kids, especially I could see, um, that that might sort of grab their attention or, or something like that. But it's, it's, it's definitely no, uh, it, it's not like you're going to hand this to your confirmation class kids and they're going to go, Oh, cool. <laughs> well, they might until they open it up and start paging through it. But so it's, it's a good effort, but really, you know, go grab some comic books off the shelves, look at the names attached to them. And then go and offer them lots of money um, <laughs> and say, help us out here. <laughs> right? All right? If nothing else, just get a hold of the Mecha Manga guys. Yeah. They, they, they got it with an original ways of telling Bible stories. That would be awesome. I, I mean, that, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so, I don't see uh, I don't see Concordia Publishing House or you know the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod going down that road. <laughs> at this point, maybe you guys have feel different. Maybe you disagree. Maybe you have. Uh, maybe you want to let us know who you think should win the Super Bowl. You can contact us always at podcast at crossfeednews dot com. Yep. So thanks everybody for tuning in and um, and and if anybody wants to. Uh, wants to throw lots of money at me to come up with a plot for a, a new uh, comic book version of the catechism, I would be happy to accept that money. <laughs> I think you know what the problem is just as well as I do. <laughs> so anyway, enjoy the Super Bowl. Uh, if you're a Super Bowl watcher, otherwise enjoy the commercials. And uh, just make sure that you got your TiVo ready with the 30-second skip when the GoDaddy ad comes on. <laughs> And if nothing else, sit down and read a comic book version of the catechism during it. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Good night, everybody. God bless. <laughs>